Hello again everyone. Today we are going to talk about adding a shopping cart for PayPal to your site. In the last video we had talked about a buy now button. This video is to set up a cart so that you can buy multiple things and have a cart at the end and pay for it all at the end. This is a little more complicated but we're going to be using a plug-in and hopefully it'll be a little more understandable and in the long run a little bit easier. So let me take you through it. First thing we have to do is install the plugins. To do that, you go to plugins and add new. We're going to do a search called WP Simple Shopping. And you're going to see a few things show up here. We're going to be installing two of these. The first one is called UI for WordPress Simple PayPal Shopping Cart. And the other one is the WordPress Simple PayPal Shopping Cart. Install the Simple PayPal Shopping Cart first. Just hit Install Now. Say, are you sure you want to? Yes. And then activate the plugin. Now again, we're going to have to hit Add New. Simple PayPal shopping or any variation thereof. And the one we're looking for now is the UI for WordPress Simple PayPal shopping. Hit install now. And activate it. Now, the reason we're getting two plugins, the first one sets up PayPal by adding in what they call short codes, which are little bits of code within a post so that you can add a button. The UI, which stands for user interface, is a user interface to make the process easy. In essence, the user interface creates the short codes for you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go to the simple PayPal shopping cart and hit settings so we can set it up. Now, the PayPal email address is, is critical. This is assuming that you have a PayPal account already set up and it has an email address attached to it. So this has to be the right email address in order to get paid to your account. Otherwise, it won't know where to go. So first thing you put in is your PayPal shopping cart email. Give it a title. We'll just leave it as your shopping cart. It asks you... Uh, to show what to show when your card is empty and we'll just leave it your card is empty I think that's fine currency and symbols these are all sort of basic things your base shipping costs if you want to put in a base shipping cost or you can choose that as part of the price that'll come in later we're just gonna leave it at zero the must collect shipping address on PayPal I think that box is important um, if you are going to be shipping something. If it's a digital download, then you don't have to worry about that. You can also use profile-based shipping, which is if you had set up PayPal and you have shipping information within PayPal itself, you can use that profile that you might have already set up. The button itself we'll call Add to Cart, and the return URL is the address of this site so that if you redirect it somewhere after a successful payment, you come back to the actual homepage of the site. These other two parts are important, the products page URL and where you redirect for checkout. So the products page URL is where your products page is. So what you need to do is go find out what that actual page is. So what we'll do is come up here to pages And we'll look for the products page. This is the one that I'm using to hold all the products. Yours might be called something else, featured products or something like that. But this is the page. And then if you view the page, you'll get its address. So I'm going to copy this address. I'm going to go back to the settings for the shopping cart. And we're going to enter that page in here. OK. Let's update that. 
Now we have to do a checkout page. After someone buys products, it's going to go to a cart and we need a place for that to go and that's called the checkout page. So we have to create that. I'm going to hit add new to create a new page and we're just going to call this page checkout for right now. Doesn't need to have any images or, or anything. It could stay with the default template. It's fine. Just hit publish and view the page so that we know what the address is. I'm going to copy that and go back and hit checkout page URL. Okay, so now in order for the products page to know that it's a cart, there's a code that has to be put into it. And that code is right here. It's called show WP shopping cart. And we're going to highlight this with the little brackets. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to our checkout page. And we are just going to paste it into there like that. And we are going to update it. Now this is going to be our, and you can see this is our checkout page. You'll see that it'll, once we buy something, there'll be information in here. Now the other thing we need to do is make sure that the checkout is available wherever you are on the site. So we really want to put it into the menu. So what we'll do is go back over to the blog and go into appearance where we did our menus in the other videos. And this is our menu setup and we want the last one to be checkout. In the pages section here, the, our new checkout is set up. We hit add to menu and now we have a checkout link there. So we hit save menu and now we have checkout. I'll show you. Let's go to the site and you can see that the checkout page is now right here. So the next thing we want to do is actually go into a post and add the add to cart button and the pricing information so we can actually buy something. So let's go to the post that we were doing in another video, which was this 80 clinic photo. You see here, there's a little icon. That little icon is the new UI icon to set up pricing. So what we do is put our cursor here where we would want the pricing to be. We hit this button and a new UI comes up that allows us to put in information about the product and the pricing. So we're going to call this the Haiti Clinic Photo. Now I'm going to charge $50 for that photo. My shipping cost is going to be $10. So they have two options here, sizes and colors. If you don't want to use sizes and colors, you can use your own custom ones under custom one and custom two down below. But for what I'm doing here is I just have two sizes. And so I'm going to use both of those sizes. And the way you do that is eight by 12 is one size. Then you need to hit this line button, which is on your keyboard is above return. There's a backslash and above that, uh, is this symbol. So you hit shift to get that symbol. Some people don't know where that is. And now we're going to do a 12 by 18. So those are our two sizes. And we're going to hit insert. And you see what it did. It just put the short code in that normally would have had to be done manually. So it just figured it out for us. And then what we do is update it. take a look at it and you can see there's now add the cart button 8 by 12 and 12 by 18 the limitation here is we know that this is uh, $50 and there's two sizes but what if I wanted to do two different prices and two different sizes the software doesn't have the option to do that so what you would just do is make two different ones one 8 by 12 add to cart and then you make another one that says 12 by 18 add to cart and then you might want to 
come down over here. Because it doesn't say price, you can say you can just write something like fifty dollars, and then update it. And then view it, and you can see the price there. So that would be the easy way to do it. Now, if we were actually to add this to the cart, and you get taken right to your cart automatically, because this is where we set up that redirect. So Haiti Clinic photo, the 8x12, because that's the one that I chose, is here. There's a quantity. It's $50. Shipping is 10 And the total is 60 And when they check out with PayPal, what, and they can use their Visa or MasterCard or American Express or their PayPal account by clicking there. Now let's go back to the product. Let's go back to the clinic photo. Now let's say I wanted to add another one. Add to cart. And now we have another one. It works typical for a cart. It's very simple because we have the UI. Your cart's always there through the menu item. One other thing that you might want to add is a side widget. This area over here where we have this sort of test Twitter and the tag cloud, that is called a sidebar. The way that we have them set up for you is posts have sidebars and pages don't have sidebars. Pages can have sidebars. We haven't set it up that way. There is a way to do that. I'm not going to go into that now, but I do want you to know that it's available to you. Um, so if you went to the products page, you can see it's a full width page. There's no sidebar. We come over here and there's a sidebar. Those sidebars are created through widgets. So this plugin provides a widget for you for the sidebar. So let's go to appearance, to widgets. And you can see the latest, what we were just looking at, latest Twitter and tag cloud in the sidebar. Well, here's the WP PayPal shopping cart widget. All you do is drag it. I'm going to put it at the top. On the top. Just drag it up there. You don't really have to do any settings because we already did the settings. So we hit save. Now, we go to the products page and look on any product or any blog page or any place that there is a sidebar available. You can see now that we have the actual shopping cart in the sidebar as well as the checkout at the top. So I think that's kind of a nice thing to have. Uh, hopefully you understood all this. I know it's a little complicated and I try to give it to you in a step-by-step -step way. You might have to view this video a couple of times, but I think this is a good solution for most people that want to add some kind of shopping system to their site. Hopefully it'll work for you. Thanks, and hopefully you'll be back for the next video.